Anyway, moving right along to Matt Olson. Uh, let's see. Ben, let's get your take on Matt Olson. 127 games last year, only 127, I should say, and he still put up 36 bombs, solid 267 average, 91 RBI. What do you think about Matt Olson here? Well, I mentioned it earlier. I would rather have Matt Olson than a lot of first basemen that we've already discussed because I think the price is really, really nice. I've just uh, clicked off. Let me take a look and see what his actual ADP. It was 67. 67.37 is his average ADP. And if we kind of look at his numbers, and the injury, by the way, was a hammock bone that he had removed. And everybody said, hey, hammock bone, sap your power. When he mm-hmm. comes back, he's going to struggle. Well, he didn't. He still hit for power. If we also take a look back at the 2017 season when he made his debut and his power output was insane. He had 24 home runs and 216 plate appearances. Does that sound a little bit like a Mets rookie first baseman from last year? A little bit. The power output was crazy insane for uh, uh, Alonso earlier, whereas with um, Olsen here, we've seen the drop off to his level which is what he did in 2018, which is what he did last year. And it's still a lot of power. So honestly, I think if uh, Alonso falls off a little bit and kind of does and mirrors what uh, Olsen did here in the past couple of years, I could see that happening. And if that's the case, I'll take the pick 40 picks later that is still going to hit for power and could hit for more power. If we extrapolate Pete Alonso's uh, plate appearances last year, which were 693 to Matt Olsen, Olsen would have hit 45 home runs. And that's not 53, but it's still an awful lot of home runs. So I could foresee a scenario where Alonso falls off a little bit and loses the home run chase to Matt Olson, and the cost is significantly less. And look, Olson's going to hit 250, 260. He's going to hit the same batting average. He's going to score runs. He's going to drive in runs. He's going to walk. I like Olson a ton here. He might be my favorite first baseman, but there are a couple more guys coming up that I do like as well. But this is definitely a spot that I'm looking to take a guy who's going to hold my team accountable for power. And he's just 25. So who knows? Maybe there's even another level to his game. Yeah. And, and when you look at the projections too, Steamer only has him, you know, Steamer has him down for 150 games, 642 plate appearances. They only have Matt Olson about six homers behind Pete Alonzo as well. So that's a good point there, man. And, and, you know, he is a solid value. I mean, just with the OBP that he put up, he's a guy that I think in one league I'd got, I don't think anybody even drafted him just because everybody was so scared that the, the you know, the injury was going to sap his power. And I think I got him as a waiver pickup, you know, a couple of weeks into the season and just stashed him away. And I think I ended up winning that league. And it was a lot, a lot of it was because of the fact that I did get those, those 36 home runs essentially for nothing when you think about it as far as he didn't get drafted. So 2018, he played in all 162 games, so I don't see any reason. You know, the handmade bone thing, kind of a fluky injury. I don't think it's something, obviously, it's not like a hamstring or an ankle or a back that's going to nag him. So I don't think there's any reason for him to not play in at least 150-something games. So yet again, another guy that I think you're going to be able to count on a little bit. But here's where we kind of see, you know, that that average take a little bit of a dip, but you still like the OBP there. It was a 351 last year. No reason to think that he can't get close to that again. No steals here yet again. Not looking for that disposition, but we also we kind of get these guys too that kind of drop off from there. But and I, and I think he's almost kind of a sneaky one of our first, you know, sneaky, really good, really consistent guys that's going to come off the board. Yeah, you look at the the projections for Matt Olson and Pete Alonso, and they're very similar. So I think that Matt Olson has just found money down here at pick 67 so yeah give me him over pete alonzo all day olsen is even as crazy good as his power output was last well just his his uh his woba altogether is 368 his expected woba was even better 16 points higher at 386 so his expected production was even better than what he actually put up last year which is pretty crazy to think about so i think that this um this adp is pretty much a steal the only downside here is that he is not one of those not nothing guys he is probably not going to give you a single stolen base um, but uh, I think that the value here is so good that I don't even care about that at this point. Well, and if I did want to argue too, I guess I could say that the athletics tend to tinker a lot. So if you do get a stretch where he's struggling a little bit, he may not be allowed to work through it as much as some other guys do. So you might have to be a little more active, I guess, when monitoring your roster. Now, if it's a weekly league, there's not a whole lot you can do it about it. But if it's a daily league, maybe you can slip some guys in. Just pay a little more attention but that's also a stretch to say. So I have no problem just plugging Matt Olson in as long as he's healthy. But I, that's what I could foresee happening just because Oakland tends to do that. 
Yeah, I'm not too worried about that. I think he's pretty entrenched there at first base. 162 games uh, a year ago, you know, before that handmade injury. So I think he's going to be pretty consistent. Hopefully he doesn't have too many swoons, but he would be prone to that given his strikeout rate. So that is definitely on the table. Uh, next up we have...